We're here at the Brooklyn Axis Project to learn how wine professionals are making the world a better place through wine. As head sommelier of the University Club, wine enthusiast's top 40 under 40, star of Esquire Network's TV show Uncorked, finisher of many marathons as a para-athlete, and co-founder of Wheeling Forward, Yannick Benjamin is using his determination, skills, and passion for wine as a vehicle to improve the lives of the physically disabled. We're here really to find out how wine is changing the world. So we're here with Yannick Benjamin. Thank you so much. Thank you. Um, I can't wait to learn about all the, the, the moves you're making and really changing the world through this fabulous drink that we love. Exactly. Thank all you. right, so we're, we're here always about wine, right? Right. So let's start there. Right. Why wine? For you? Well, for me, uh, wine was something that I grew up with, actually. Both of my parents are French, and my mom's from Bordeaux. You know, I think wine, what it signifies is it's a, it's a form of uh, bringing people together, a sense of community, and you're sharing a beautiful agricultural product that really puts a big smile on everybody's face. Obviously, you had an accident in 2003. Right. Can you tell people a little bit about that? So in 2003, um, I was working at the Ritz-Carlton Hotel. Okay. And I, had I was being mentored by a master sommelier who is still my mentor up to this oh. day. And so I was super excited. I just, I'm, I'm really fighting, I just found my footing in the industry. And how old are you? This, I'm 25 years old. Okay. And uh, one evening, um, unfortunately, I was heading back up to the Bronx. It was a Sunday night and I was driving back home and that's where I sustained my car accident and I ruptured my spinal cord. And really, I really had this moment of like, uh, just flashbacks of every significant or insignificant thing of my life, like in a couple of seconds, right? Wow. And you know, you're just thinking about that time you got caught stealing bubble gum at the local <laughs> deli. Uh, you know, you're in the hot, you're in the ER, and everyone's poking, and you know, you're surrounded by millions of doctors. Yeah. CAT scan, MRI, CAT scan, MRI, and then this uh, very eager uh, doctor comes in, and he comes in and he's like, "All right, so um, you know, we've got some results, and here's the good news, and here's the bad news." You know, as he was saying that, I already knew where he was going to go with this. And I'm like, please don't say it right now. And the good news is that, you know, you're a big, strong guy um, and it seems like you'll be fine, you know, but the bad news is that you're never gonna run a marathon. Whoa. Yeah. So you said that in the hospital you had your roommate and that's sort of where wheeling forward became something in your mind. Right. And then eight or nine years later, it's now right. actually something in the real world. Right. Tell us a little bit more about um, how it came to fruition. Truth is, we might even have to go backwards because when I was in rehabilitation and I became, I became roommates with um, this gentleman named Alex Lagudin, who's now the co-founder of Wheeling Forward, right? And so what we realized while we were in there, we didn't have the same anxieties as the other individuals or that were on the same floor. Like they didn't, what? Well, they didn't have the financial resources to make um, simple modifications like widening the doors, putting grab bars in the bathroom, all of that kind of uh, good stuff. So that was already the inspiration wow. for the beginning of Wheeling Forward. So um, at this point, you know, I'm working and Alex and myself, he's working as well. And I, and I said, you know, we talked about this, but we should probably do something, you know, and I want to do some wine events where we raise money and then give it to people that are less fortunate. I get to take my pleasure of wine and then, you know, what I say, turning wine into hope, right? Hi, my name is Penny Richards. The Access Project has helped me by preparing for the 2019 NYC Marathon. Um, that's been one of my goals forever, but I haven't, I wasn't able to realize that I would be able to do that until I came to the Access Project. Originally, that was a solo goal, but now three other members are doing it with me as well. And we're in the process of creating our own hand cycle team and fundraising for it. You said earlier that 20% of yes. people with physical disabilities, yeah. only 20% yeah. are working. Yeah, for sure. I mean, one of my, my biggest goals is to, to have more visibility with people with both physical, cognitive disability, or what you even want to call invisible disability, hired in the hospitality industry, whether it's working for wine companies, hotels, or restaurants. And I think it's very important because you just don't see that. Tell us more about the Brooklyn Access Project. So the uh, Brooklyn Access Project was uh, finally completed about two years ago. Uh, we're right on Church Avenue. And as you can see, it's quite a big space. All the bathrooms here are wheelchair accessible. So there's no kind of barriers here. That's the most important thing. Hello, my name is Teresa Harris. 
With Wheeling Forward, I was able to do water skiing, which was marvelous. I wanted to jump out of the plane, but I missed it this time, so I am planning on doing that again. They did recently do a ski trip, but me and Snow don't get along. My name is Eli Ramos. I work with Wheeling Forward as a disability advocate and also as a peer mentor. I remember in my early days of accident, it took me about a year or so to find like-minded individuals who are going through my situation, namely Alex and Yannick. And so part of what I do for the organization is try to replicate that same feeling with our members. My favorite exercises at Axis are boxing and spin class. I like to do things that are really difficult so I could really like see my progress. A lot of the exercises that we do actually like have practical appliances. So before I started coming to Access, I wasn't able to transfer to my bed on my own. I can do that now because of the exercises here at Access Project, so it's very good for me. There's also a program that I run uh, dealing with uh, training for advocacy so that we can empower a lot more of our members to make these trips up to Albany and to D.C. and to um, City Hall and uh, to see if we can enact more policies that, that favor our um, community. All right, so let's bring it back to wine. Tell us a little more about the Wine on Wheels event sure. once a year. Yep. So uh, we have Wine on Wheels this year happening on uh, Saturday, April 27th at City Winery, which is down on Varick Street. Um, so we're super excited. We have about 80 different sommeliers. We have about 250 to 300 different wines, and they're all pouring them. It's one big party. Um, it's really exciting. So is it just about tasting different wines with psalms and having the access and the tasting, basically? Yeah, and it's all because it's all going to a good cause. Are there other wine events throughout the year? Yeah, so we have something called Reason Without Borders, which is like reasons from all around the world. We have our Casino and Wine Night that happens. Oh, fun. Okay, so these are all events with psalms there. Yep. And great wines and great tasting wine. is right. really the fun of it. That's it, exactly. It's a, it's a very simple formula. It's nothing, yeah. <laughs> you know, we're not reinventing the wheel here, that's for sure. Where I'm most inspired is how you've dug deep and overcome. In addition to that, how you've served a population that you didn't know that you were gonna serve. And um, you're making New York City and actually the world a better place. Oh, well thank you very much. If you wanna support Yannick and all of his projects, and it's Wheeling Forward, Wine on Wheels, and the Access Project, yep. go to wineonwheels.org. And cheers to you. Cheers, thank you, Carol. Thank you.